Good afternoon, everyone. Hope your Tuesday is going well. Time to talk a little bit of Seahawks news, or at least we'll call them Seahawks rumors because it's not really news yet, but this team is taking a look at a few players that they might bring in for at least a couple weeks, and it's worth talking about, especially because there is one player who some people want to sign that would be a fairly high-profile signing and would definitely at least get some people's attention. And I think this topic is pretty polarizing for Seahawks fans, and people keep asking me about it. So even though I don't really think it's newsworthy, I will go ahead and talk about the uh, small elephant in the room. We'll call it a smaller elephant. I don't really consider it to be a real elephant in the room, but... It's definitely something that is on people's minds right now, and if you know, you know. I will talk about it before the end of this video. I know a lot of you people want me to go ahead and say something about it, so I will. But before I get into that, let's talk about some of the stuff that I think actually has a chance of happening. So, we know about Chris Carson. Obviously, he's out for at least another two games, and Alex Collins is probably going to miss a little bit of time as well based off what Carroll had to say coming out of the Pittsburgh game, so... We may need a running back. Right now, you take a look at the running backs on the roster. You've got Travis Homer, who who did play pretty well against the Steelers, and I, I could see him being an effective piece for this offense for at least a few weeks. Uh, you've got uh, DJ Dallas, who I, I don't know how I feel about DJ Dallas at this point. He's obviously got something to his game. He's not a complete waste out there. He he does have some talent, some ability, but then he just messes up the simple stuff like blowing the chip block on TJ Watt in overtime or fumbling and nearly blowing the end of the game late in the fourth quarter there. Uh, he Thank God the ball bounced back into his hands, but that that's a fumble in a crucial situation. We had plenty of those on uh, Sunday, so I can't just single out DJ Dallas, but I don't know what we have with him right now. And then, of course, you have Rashad Penny, who's coming back. And who knows what, if anything, we're going to get out of him before he gets hurt again. And with that, it's kind of a question of if, not when. And then you, or excuse me, when, not if. How did I screw that up? And then you have Josh Johnson, who people like him. I like him well enough. Would not shock me if we promoted him for a game or two while we wait for some of these guys to get back. But that still maybe leaves you with a need, at least on the practice squad, for a running back. So today, earlier today, the Seahawks did work out a couple of running backs, one of whom we know from the preseason, B.J. Emmons. Uh, he was one of the two free agent running backs we worked out today. You guys may remember B.J. Emmons played for the Seahawks in the preseason. He got the early axe, and then he went to the, I believe, the Raiders and scored a touchdown on us in a preseason game. So uh, we kind of liked what we saw from him. We only saw a little bit, but people did seem to like the way he was playing, and it would make some sense to bring him back onto the practice squad for a couple of weeks. If we, uh, excuse me, if we promote Josh Johnson, that leaves us with no running back on the practice squad and four on the active roster. So it makes sense to bring somebody in until one of Collins or Carson gets back. And the other guy we worked out was a Dexter Williams, who we're not personally familiar with. Uh, he had, I believe, spent two years on the Packers and had like 19 career rushing yards. So uh, Dexter Williams did have a college career, career of some notoriety, played at uh, Notre Dame for four years. And um, in 2018, his senior year, he did actually have a pretty prolific season. He had uh, almost 1,000 yards on 6.5 yards of carry. I'll zoom in a little bit here, even though this stupid ad is getting in the way. Uh, 12 touchdowns. He's a pretty stout dude, if you take a look at his measurables. He's a 5'11", 215 pounds. So he's got some weight to him. It seems like he's a little bit of a power back. Uh, with somebody who got into the end zone a lot at Notre Dame, 20 touchdowns in his career. So... Not too much of a receiver, although there are certainly some players out there who are good receivers out of the backfield, and the offense that they're in just never allows for it to manifest, so can't rule that out. 
but um, either one of these guys would probably be fine. I'm not going to get too excited about either of them, but I know there were some people out there who really liked B.J. Emmons, and um, it, it makes sense that we would bring in a running back for a few weeks here while we wait out the Carson and uh, Collins injuries. It may as well be these two guys. It may as well be just about anybody else as well, but B.J. Emmons has a little bit of familiarity with the team, and Dexter Williams... Seems like he's got a little bit of a power back game to him, so there, there, there seems like there's uh, something here. Okay, so those are the two guys. I, I imagine there's a very good chance we sign at least one of those two guys. So that's the important stuff, but now let's talk about the stuff that I don't think is realistic. Uh, let's talk about a certain quarterback who the Seahawks apparently at least had a conversation with. So we're talking about Cam Newton, and people have been talking about Cam Newton ever since Wilson got hurt. They've been talking about him ever since Geno Smith uh, started taking snaps for the Seahawks in actual games. They've been talking about him pretty much in every stream I've run. I can't run a stream without somebody talking about Cam Newton, and I, I kind of get why. We just lost our quarterback. He's a quarterback. He's available, and he has been good in the past. It does kind of make sense. And then the Seahawks apparently reached out to Cam Newton, which gave the possibility of bringing him in seem possible. But as of right now, based off the information we have, and to be clear, we spoke with him a few days ago. This is not something that just happened. Doesn't seem like anything's going to happen. And I think most people are cool with that. I think most people didn't want Cam, but some people did. I definitely had people in my streams the last several days who have been talking about getting Cam and saying that he could help save our season. And I, I want to talk about that for a second here because Cam Newton is probably at this point a little more talented than Geno Smith. But there's some stuff about the Cam Newton talk that kind of confuses me. For one, Geno Smith played fine against Pittsburgh. And if you think otherwise... You probably have unfair expectations. Geno Smith is a backup quarterback starting his first game in years on the road against a good defense with an offensive line that played really poorly. So what do you expect? I don't understand why people are acting as if Geno Smith played a Nathan Peterman game or a, a Cooper Rush game and didn't look like he belonged out there. He completed all but three of his passing attempts in the second half on, I think. I think he was 15 of 18 in the second half in OT, if I'm recalling correctly. Yes, he had the fumble. Yes, he missed a few open receivers. Yes, he held onto the ball too long in some instances. But here's the main thing. Geno Smith at least spent this offseason in the Waldron offense. He has some familiarity with it. He's able to do some of the things that we want our quarterback to do in this offense because he's been practicing it, because he's been familiarizing himself with it. You bring in Cam Newton, he's not going to have that familiarity with this offense. He's going to have to learn a new playbook in a handful of days and go out there and start against a good Saints defense um, just, what, now five... Uh, no, actually, excuse me, six days from now. So that's a recipe for failure. And if you think that Cam Newton in that situation is going to play better than Geno would, then I, I think you're fooling yourself a little bit. And I think you're remembering the Cam Newton who won MVP and not the Cam Newton who looked a little broken down last year. So <clears throat> those are basically my thoughts if we bring in Cam Newton, I have to believe it'll be to be a backup to Geno in case Geno gets hurt, because even Cam Newton, having just acclimated himself to this offense, might be better than Jake Luton, who has no NFL experience whatsoever. Or, well, excuse me, let me take that back. A little bit of NFL experience, but very little, very, very little. Maybe then you could make a case for it, but in terms of him actually coming into play... I don't think it's realistic, and if if Cam Newton learning a brand new offense in a, less than a week would be better than Geno Smith, it would only be a tiny bit better, and a tiny bit better is not going to move the needle in most of these games. 
And yeah, you will be gaining some degree of mobility and some degree of an ability to run the ball that Gino. I mean, Gino certainly doesn't have the power that Cam does, but you're probably losing something in accuracy because there are definitely times in the last couple of years where Cam Newton's arm just kind of looks kind of dead. And some people are saying that uh, the reason why he got cut is because he was unvaccinated. That might be true. And now he's vaccinated. So now I don't understand why he, um, I don't understand why he hasn't already been signed if that's the case. Apparently, he has offers, by the way, and is waiting for the waiting for the right situation. If Wilson is really coming back in after two more games, this is not a good situation for Cam Newton, and he knows that. He's not going to come in here, probably have a few days to learn the playbook, and then only get to play in two games, and then be relegated back to the bench. That's that's not what Cam's looking for. He's looking for a real chance to start. And if he comes in now, you can make the argument that he wouldn't be ready. <laughs> Excuse me. Ooh. Uh, until the game against Jacksonville, and then what, he's going to play one game and then go back to the bench? I don't think that's what he wants, and I don't see how that really helps us. So that's my thoughts on the Cam Newton stuff. That's really all I can say about it. It's fun to play with the idea for a second, but you do the math. It doesn't make any sense, and it's not what's. It's not going to help us. And at the end of the day... We kept Geno Smith around this offseason to be the backup. Now we have a situation where we need the backup, so let the backup back up. And if he starts playing really, really badly, and it comes out that he needs to play for a long period of time, then maybe we can have these conversations, but nah. In Geno, we trust until we don't trust him anymore. See you guys later. Go Hawks. Streams later.